Hi there, so I've got the video playing on a double speed so I can just narrate the process using the standard brush here. Add some of these tendons in. And I'm holding the Alt button to use the, uh, the Z sub feature. And this is now the move brush. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll add something in and then smooth it down, sort of build the volume up. And in this case I'm using standard, but uh, like with the, the ear demo, um, clay tubes works fine, clay is a, is a good option as well. I don't have clay in the default menu over there, but it's easy to get to by going to the brush menu. So here I'm using the uh, Flatten 404 brush with the square alpha, which is the other side of the volume building. I like to build the volume up, but I don't care too much about how that happens. And then I use the Flatten brush to sort of get it to conform down uh, to something that makes sense. And you can see the move brush here is actually affecting the fingers on either side, which is kind of annoying. So there's a brush that, a, a variant on the move brush called Move Topological that ignores geometry if it's far enough away. Uh, like if there's enough verts between it and what you're actually touching. Um, but uh, just to keep things simple, I'm trying to stick to the, the main default tools. So back to move. I'm just trying to f get that finger shape. A little inflate here. And when I want to make a big change, like tweaking the position of the thumb, I like to do that at a lower subdivision level. Uh, the, there are fewer, fewer verts, and so the edge, or the, the, um, Translation or whatever you end up doing is more smoothly distributed over fewer uh, polygons, so you, you you don't run the risk of getting like a a tear or a sharp edge, which might might be the case if you've got uh, you know zillions and zillions of polygons. So I want to reposition the end of that finger a little bit, mask it off, blur the mask, use transpose. And here I'm using clay tubes, and I'm alternating between raising up the surface and uh, painting it back down. Try to even it out a little bit. And you see I'm hopping around a lot. I don't uh, spend too much time on any one, one place, and I realize the thumb is um, a little short in the middle and long on the end. And this guy's got a little bit of a crooked index finger. So it looks like I might have gotten a little carried away with the inflate brush. So I'm using damn standard. I'm s uh, sorry, uh, clay tubes, negative clay tubes to push it back down. And you can see I've got the back face masking turned on, which is uh, right above the the big brush icon there in the toolbar. So using damn standard here to just kind of block in where those those folds are going to go. adjustments using the move brush and I'm going to bend that uh, the last two knuckles down. Typically people's hands when they're relaxed the very last knuckle doesn't tend to uh, fold at a different angle until the finger gets folded 
pretty far down. And if you do fold the last knuckle, it tends to read as being like oddly double jointed or something. And it's really easy if you've got a, a, a your base mesh came from Z spheres to use the selection to show or hide uh, the the various poly groups that result from the Z spheres, and that's just Control and Shift and clicking on the geometry. And it's always a good idea to rotate your camera around so you can see all the different planes here. So I want to make sure that the two middle fingers are sticking out a little bit further at the knuckle than, um, than the index finger and the pinky to give it that look of curvature. So clay tubes here just carving away some of that volume. So we're visiting that tendon, a little divot there above the, above the thumb, with damp standard and the flatten brush. So just resolving some of that, that work with the clay tubes I did using the flatten 404 with the square alpha. So this is the damp center brush holding Alt and it, it pulls it up. So I accidentally uh, hit the button and I was holding Control or Shift or something and it'll think that you're trying to put the um, the selection in your tool brush menu there. So um, every once in a while you can kind of screw it up. But uh, if you want, you can just go back to, I think, in the Preferences tab where the UI got loaded way back when. Uh, you can just do a restore custom UI and it should put that back. So in the, in the photo, I can see the webbing at the bottom of the hand coming through, so I was trying to, trying to figure out how to make that happen. So I just noticed the middle finger is way, way too short. So if you've got the transpose tool selected and you try to mask, it can behave oddly sometimes. You can get sort of a, a graduated mask from one side of the transpose to the other. 
So just remember to go back into draw mode when you want to redraw your mask to get predictable results. So what I'm doing here is using that uh, trim feature of the, the move transpose. Clean up the uh, end of the arm there. So I'm noticing here that there's a pretty big difference between the the the, the two fingers there on the inside. So I'm going to fill that in. So again, I'm I'm going to do some some moving here. So I'm dropping it down to a low subdivision. I'm going to use the move transpose and then just rotate rotate it back a little bit to pull the end in. So I'm just using transpose to position the entire model. It's a little bit closer when I hold the shift key and, and snap the camera uh, to the reference images. And I'm going to bend the fingers a little bit. So you can see when you're messing with these little fingers how how crucial the uh, mask lasso and transpose tools are. And I just realized the fingers look a little small. So you can see that one little polygon there between the the two. Uh, middle fingers. That's that's the kind of stuff that you can get when the the low poly layout isn't quite right. You just bump the subdivision up high enough, it'll it'll uh, go away. And once we get this hand finished, uh, we're going to retopologize it so the the uh, uh, geometric flow is perfect for for the shape that we've got. And if we want to, we can add a little bit more detail at that point. So just uh, figuring out a little bit more of that that deeper bone and sinew using the damp sander brush and clay tubes. So I just switched over to the clay brush just to try it out. Back to move.
just figuring out the placement of that that last little knuckle there. So back to clay tubes. So I've got the, the intensity, Z intensity of clay tube set set to 7, which is pretty low, uh, which makes it really easy to get uh, so a nice subtle stuff. Make sure that, that if, if you feel like you can't control the displacement you're getting with your brushes, to, to definitely take a look at that, that Z intensity, because a lot of brushes, uh, the default setting is really high, like 35 or 45 or something, and it's, you know, it's like smashing your model with a hammer. Um, so definitely be aware of that stuff. So we're getting close to the end of this video. We'll be continuing the sculpt in the next video. And it'll be pretty similar. Just continuing to demonstrate the various brushes and how they work and what the workflow should be for a sculpt like this. So stick around.